You know who's a great guy? Mike Carparelli. If you go to carparelliguitars.com, he'll send you some of the best guitar components money can buy. Or he'll build you an absolute soulmate of a guitar. I play a Carparelli. You should too. All right, so you've gotten to the point where you have finalized the drum arrangement and you like the way it's sounding and now we're going to try to now we're going to move towards translating this into uh, things we can use in our beat buddy so what we need to do is to cut this up into midi loops the first thing we have to do is convert it to midi notes so this is a great feature of logic and garage band now, there's no uh, direct way in GarageBand to convert the drummer track to MIDI, but the process is very simple. We're going to create a new track, and this time we're going to choose Software Track or Software Instrument. And we're going to choose a drum sound to play it on. Let's say Bluebird, because that's what this one's using, so it'll sound the same. And now all we have to do is copy and paste the entire thing. So I'm going to highlight all of the drum parts, hit Command C, highlight the track I would like it on, put the playhead to where I'd like it to be, and there we go. Now you can see the larger MIDI loops we have created. I want you to have this video for free, but if you've got two or three bucks lying around and you can kick them over here, it helps me take time from my real job and do more of this. So find the link below, go to PayPal, select only the least of what you can afford, and just know that I'd really appreciate it. Now what we have to do is do some surgery and slice and dice these into smaller loops that the Beat Buddy can play. And if you're not quite sure what I mean by that, the Beat Buddy plays loops that repeat. So it takes the one drum pattern, plays it over and over again, until you step on the pedal and add a fill or make a transition. And those loops can be one bar, two bars, four bars, six bars. It really depends on the drum pattern you would like to use for your song. Usually, though, a one or two bar pattern is enough. And for this song, that works. So I've opened up the editor here, and you can see the MIDI loops for the first drum pattern. There it is. And all we need is maybe two bars from two to four. So I'm just going to cut the MIDI loop in this section here. And you do that by placing the playhead where you would like the cut to happen. And you can right click and hit split at playhead or command T. I'm going to hit command T. And there's my loop. Now let's continue because there might be fills in this section, which there aren't until I get here, which is the transition from the verse to the chorus. And I'd like to use that transition in Beat Buddy because, as you may know, if you look at a song in Beat Buddy Manager, there is a section for transitions, and those are transition fills that move from one part of the song to the next. They are optional, you don't have to have one, but they do queue up the change uh, for a song and uh, it's a fairly typical thing to happen in music, so you probably want them. And I'm just gonna do the same type of surgery to this loop. And so now I have a transition loop. Now, because this part here is the same as the loop we're gonna keep, we can actually just delete it. For reasons I'm going to show you in just a second, I'm gonna put the fills on a separate track for now. So I'm going to right click this and duplicate this track. So that's new track with duplicate settings. And I'm just going to drag the fill loops down here. And the reason why I'm doing that is because if you know how BeatBuddy deals with loops, um, if you play a fill or a transition, it will actually play until the first bar here. So if you would like to add a cymbal crash to that part, you can add it to the end of the fill and the beat body will add it to the 
first beat on the following bar. So I'm going to borrow this cymbal crash that the drummer track made for us. I'm going to highlight it and click Command C to copy it. And I'm going to go down here, hit Command V to paste it. And then we can listen to how that is going to sound. Okay, and that's exactly how it should sound when you play it on your Beat Buddy pedal. The reason why I like to add in the cymbals on my fills is because I don't like to think about stomping on the pedal uh, to add accents while I'm playing. So you may know that if you have the outboard pedal switch for your Beat Buddy, you can add accents to your songs and that will add something like a cymbal crash and you can stomp on that and it will play the cymbal crash ad lib. But I like to program the cymbal crashes into my beats so that I don't have to think about that. But that is up to you. If you like just stomping on the pedal to play your own cymbal crashes, then you can just leave this blank or put them in there and do both. It's up to you. So far, we have the main beat for our verse and we have the transition fill. And now we can move on to cutting up the chorus. You'll notice in this case, the drummer track added the cymbal crash for us and it was there and we just want to analyze it and look at it and make sure the notes are all aligned. We would like this to be a hi-hat on the first beat because it will add a second cymbal crash that causes problems on the beat. So that should be okay and we're going to make a two bar loop here. Hit command T, got that again. There seems to be a fill here. You can just look at it and see there's a bit of a variation. I want to keep those fills just to have some variety in our song if we liked it. So Command T on one side and Command T on the other. And we're lucky there's nothing after this, so I can just keep that first beat. Drag that down to the fill track. And if you're not sure that you've made everything lined up, just give it a listen and make sure everything is as it should be. And again, we have a transition fill. And again, we have a transition fill here at bar 17. I'm going to hit Command T and keep that. Bring it down there. And I'm going to copy and paste the cymbal crash and kick on the first beat of the following bar again. Let's hear how this transition is working. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Now, because we're back to the verse, this pattern should be the same as the first one. Although I see there's a, a fill here and we might want to keep that. So let's just cut out that fill and keep it. Don't need those notes. And again, you can just keep listening to these and make sure they work. There's probably a transition over here. Okay, so I think you're getting the idea. I have drum loops for the verse and the chorus, and I have the fills that I can use to accentuate the different parts of the song. And you get the main idea. You're cutting up the MIDI notes to create loops that you can export and put into Beat Buddy Manager and arrange as a song that you can play with your Beat Buddy pedal. You can kind of see the advan another advantage of this is that you don't have to go in and generate all the MIDI notes yourself by playing it. The computer has taken care of some of that for you, um, which is a, a bit of a time saver. And if you're not very keen on using MIDI and making your own beats, this can actually save you that step and generate things you might not be able to create on your own. And it's got a lot of flexibility and variety. So uh, this method can work on probably quite a lot of songs. Okay, so assuming that everything is in order, you're going to continue finish cutting up your song into loops. And then after you have set all of your loops, we're going to go to the next step, which is to export these to save to put into Beat Buddy Manager. Okay, so far everything is going just swimmingly. We have cut up the song, we've done our surgery, we've created our drum patterns for the different parts of our song. We've got all our fill loops all ready to be exported. And that is what we have to do next. Now, the next section is where GarageBand and Logic part ways. Exporting out of GarageBand uh, requires a couple of 
extra steps that Logic does not require. And that's because uh, GarageBand is designed to be so user-friendly, the users cannot use it. Uh, that's my personal feeling. But it can be done. There's just a few extra steps. So let's get into it. You can see you've got a bunch of loops here and you want to keep yourself organized because you have to label each one correctly so you know which is which. And there's a niggling little thing you should know. You have to move each loop up to the front of the track because when you loop or, or when you export a MIDI loop, it actually starts counting from here. So it will take all of this as empty space and then attach this here. So what you have to do is start from the beginning of the track for each loop. So there are a couple of ways you can do this just to keep yourself organized. You can actually just drag each loop to the front, export it, and then move it out of the way. You can rename each loop to keep yourself organized. So if I go here and I say rename regions, if I give each region a unique name, then it's just easier to organize because just looking at them as MIDI notes, it's hard to tell which is which. Uh, but then again, it's an extra step. Another choice is to just create as many new tracks as you need, like this, and then move each loop down to a new track at the beginning, and then you just have a long stack like this. A couple of different ways to do that. It just depends uh, how you would like to organize it. The other thing is you may come back, you may get it into the Beat Buddy and decide there's a part of it you don't like and you would like to change it. So you want to edit the MIDI notes in a particular region and you want to go back to that region and find it easily. Uh, you want to keep that organized. Otherwise, you'll be pulling your hair out trying to find out where you are. And that is a possibility, so you might want to save this file and keep it handy until you feel like your song is completely finalized. Uh, but that's up to you. So I think what I'm going to do is um, actually just create a, uh, I won't call it a garbage track, but I'll just keep a track of the completed ones. I'll just call it exported. And after I export each one, I'm going to move it here and then keep it in order. All right, so my first loop is the verse loop and that is the main uh, beat so i move it up to the beginning of the track I highlight it so that no others are highlighted make sure it's just the one and i'm going to go up here to file and hit add region to loop library and then it's telling me that the notes are not lined up so i'm going to line them up actually let's tackle that if you get that notice what it means is there are notes at the front here that are in front of the one, so they're off the frame a little bit. And what you can do is quantize those notes, and if you highlight the front notes and you hit the Q here, it will nudge them to the very beginning. And hopefully that error message will go away. And it did. Great. So to export out of GarageBand, we're actually putting it into our loop library, and we're going to give it a unique name. The song is called Headspace. We're going to call this verse one because we have other verse beats, I think. And I'm just going to hit create. There we go. So uh, this is where GarageBand gets a little dodgy. Now we got to go find this loop in our loop library. And all of our loops are going to go there. So if you want to confirm that you have exported it correctly, let's take a look at how to do that. All right, I'm going to bring a finder window in here and show you where it is. So this is a little bit complicated, I suppose. But you have to go into your user file. You're going to go to your library. You're going to find audio, Apple loops. Follow it until you get to the end. And you should start seeing your loops there. But it's exporting them as an AIF file. And later we're going to convert those to a MIDI file using a special app. So just put a pin in that for now and we'll come back to it. Just remember this because you have to go and find it in your library. Okay, but it seemed to export correctly, so we're going to assume that it's okay. So let's continue exporting our loops. The next thing we have is a verse fill. I'm going to move that up to the beginning, add to loop library. It's already called verse fill. You'll notice that if you change the name of each region, it will automatically use that name when you export it, so it's one less thing you have to do at that point. 
Okay, I think you get the idea. I'm going to speed this up and jump ahead and go to the point where I have exported all of my loops.